Now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, E-Steam The Sands of Time. It's action and adventure in ancient Egypt in this terrific teen time travel romance. Get your copy of E-Steam The Sands of Time at your favorite online bookseller today. Yesterday, I saw the trailer for Disney's latest remake of one of its iconic films, Peter Pan and Wendy. And even in the title, we see that Disney is looking to pander to the social justice crowd with this remake of Disney's iconic and legendary classic film, Peter Pan, because they're deciding to include Wendy in the title to show how they are more enlightened than their grandfathers were when the original Peter Pan was made. Now, this trailer has gained a firestorm of controversy as related to the whole production of the film, and the entire film basically takes the original legend of J.M. Barry's Peter Pan and decides to refresh it for the 21st century by giving us a heavy, heaping dose of identity politics and social justice. Now, as I was watching this trailer, I was basically shaking my head for two reasons. One, I was shaking my head because here we have Disney going and making yet another big budget remake of one of its classic films in live action. And two, they're going out here and looking to go out here and try to pander to the social justice crowds and trying to gain their favor. Now, on both points, the trailer for Peter Pan basically is an epic failure because you have Disney showing that they have no original ideas whatsoever, even though they have all of this CGI inside of the film and some fairly decent performances. Unfortunately, the it just shows how Disney has no imagination or originality and it also shows me that Disney keeps pandering to an audience that really doesn't go out here and spend money on their movies. No, these social justice types who go out here and make lots of complaints on social media like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, these are not the people who go out here and are going to spend 8 to $14 on a Disney Plus subscription to watch this movie or would go out here and spend 15 to $20 to go see this movie at a movie theater. No, these social justice types, what they do is go out here and whine and complain on social media. Then they go over to the pirate site and as they're going over to the pirate site, what they're doing is going out here and watching the same Disney Plus content for free. But you have Disney still looking to try to pander to these individuals and hoping, wishing, and praying that if they pander to these individuals, they will go out here and be able to be able to guarantee themselves a successful box office. However, they have not been able to secure that kind of box office. In the last seven to ten years, I see that they have been pandering to this social justice audience. Now this trailer was just a major disappointment for me because instead of it being a main focus on the story of Peter Pan, what we got was a heavy heaping dose of identity politics. And instead of Lost Boys, we have people shaming Wendy for misgendering the Lost Boys because the Lost Boys now feature minorities and girls and the Lost Boys are now basically the Lost People. So we see politically correctness being presented at the forefront instead of the story. And instead of us getting to know Peter Pan, Peter Pan is basically put into the background of his own story and is not focused on as a center main character of the boy who never wanted to grow up. No, what we see are identity politics narratives that have grown old and are basically the narratives that are designed to alienate people and alienate audiences being pre presented at the forefront in the Peter Pan and Wendy trailer. And instead, again, of the story being the focus, 
what we have are focuses on the genders and the race of the Lost Boys. We have a heavy dose of feminism with Wendy being presented as a major focus in the story. And we have Tinkerbell, who is a black woman. And again, all these elements just take away from the story of Peter Pan. And instead of us looking at the story of Peter Pan and seeing Peter Pan as the main character and seeing him wanting to never grow up and wanting to take Wendy to Neverland so that she could never grow up, we don't see that as the core focus of the story in this remake. And that gives me less reason to care about this remake because Walt Disney already made a classic Peter Pan animated movie. So I have no real incentive to watch this live action remake of a remake of a remake. And what this whole remake does is it's Disney's desperate attempt not only to pander to the social justice warrior types, but it is also a passive aggressive attempt at so-called diversity. Now, what Disney really doesn't want to do is go out here and spend money on black productions with black creators like myself, and they don't want to invest in black creators because they don't want to see black creators gaining wealth or the ideas of black creators being presented on the same level as white creators. So what they do is go out here and passively promote diversity inside of these remake of remake films, but aggressively what they are doing is participating in anti-black racism by denying black creators like myself an opportunity to get our projects out there and share our projects with an audience. Because creators like myself, we have been oftentimes knocking on the door of, of production companies like Disney and have lots of great unique ideas. Unfortunately, Disney does not want unique ideas from original black creators like myself. So to avoid dealing with black creators and the demands of black creators in telling our stories that show you a world from a black perspective, what Disney does is go out here and race swap a handful of characters in an old story written by a white author and then go out here and promote this as so-called diversity when in actuality all you're getting are the same stories by the white creator with some color washed characters and you're not getting a unique story that gives people a perspective on a different culture or a different experience. No, you just get the same white supremacy repackaged with some token characters thrown in like a couple of marshmallows inside of a box of tricks and that handful of marshmallows is supposed to satisfy the audience but most audiences today are not satisfied by that handful of race swap marshmallows thrown into the same white supremacist story and this is why Disney's Peter Pan and Wendy is getting ratioed on social media right now as they're running this trailer for this just again garbage remake which shows how Disney's anti-black racism is basically hindering Disney from being able to grow and being able to develop as a studio because what they're doing is again looking to use the tokens to pacify the SJW crowd but the SJW crowd doesn't spend money no, there's a billion dollars that the Black Panther made, and Black Panther showed us that there is an audience for black fantasy, but Disney doesn't want that black dollar or the 3.3 trillion in spending power that made Black Panther the number one movie of 2018 and sold out almost all of the merchandise and that was licensed for Black Panther. No, Disney doesn't see that there's a major market for a black production, but it doesn't want to invest actively in that at all because they will go out here and again make these passive aggressive empty symbolic gestures like they did with the princess and the frog where they get passively gave us a black princess 
but aggressively did not give her a black prince, nor did they go out and give her, allow her to be human for most of the movie, the same way the white princesses like Ariel and Aurora, the Sleeping Beauty, and Snow White, and many of the other princesses were allowed to remain human. No, they will dehumanize the black princess because they don't want little black girls to see themselves on the same level as white women. And with Peter Pan and Wendy, they don't want the black characters to be seen on the same level as Peter Pan. No, what they want to do is put them in the background of this white person's story and again promote tokenism as the norm in their rehash of rehash of rehash and they don't want to give you a quality story and they don't want anybody to see a black character on the same level as many of their iconic Disney characters and this is something not only done at Disney Warner Brothers did this with Static Shock back in 2001 to 2004 when it was the number one show on on Kids WB they went out here and looked to go out here and prevent Static from becoming a iconic character like Spider-Man, Superman, and Batman because he was becoming that popular. And they also actively worked to keep the keep Static from becoming a licensing and merchandising juggernaut because he never got a toy line at all, even though he was a number one show with kids. Again, this is all about trying to program an idea in people's minds that a black character should be in the background of a white person's story and even though you're promoting so-called diversity which passively you're promoting anti-black racism because what you're doing is keeping the black character creators from being able to tell their stories so they give you a rehashed character with uh, with a token with a bunch of tokens and again in this one Peter Pan and Wendy Wendy's got top billing with Peter Pan, even though J.M. Barry called it Peter Pan. So we've got the, the feminist agenda with Wendy's name on the title, but we've got the black characters in the background like Tinkerbell and the lost people, not lost boys anymore, but this is all again about promoting social just, so-called social justice, but this social justice is just more tokenism and more empty symbolism to prevent people from being able to rise in the marketplace because Disney doesn't want another Black Panther. They didn't even want the first Black Panther and they were working to sabotage that film and they sabotaged Wakanda, I mean Wakanda forever. They looked to sabotage both of those films because they don't want people looking up to black characters and, and looking up to them as heroes and seeing them on the same level as white characters. So what they do is they look to promote the idea of a black person only having value by fitting into a white world. And again, this is all about, again, pushing empty symbolic gestures. It's not about honoring the source material because this is a source material that is all about some white person's view of the world and not looking to broaden people's views to, by allowing black authors and creators like myself to be able to create productions and tell stories because bringing in a black creator means you're going to get a different perspective and that perspective may shine a light on a lot of the anti-black racism and white supremacy that transpires in America and that's why they really don't want to have many black creators on their platforms and again, this film is getting ratioed, and it's getting ratioed because many of the people who grew up watching Peter Pan know that it is a white story with white characters, but my reasons for not liking this whole Peter Pan and Wendy remake is because it's lazy, um, tokenized casting, and it prevents an, a black creator like myself from getting an opportunity to tell a story about the black experience People don't want a story with tokenized race swap characters. They want a fresh original story from an, a black creator like myself. And that's the diversity that people want, but that's not the diversity that Disney wants to give anyone. No, what they look to do is say, oh, we made this film with these, with these minority tokens 
and it failed. And this is why we cannot make productions with black people. Again, passive aggressive in that passive in that we made a production and added some black people, but aggressive in that when it fails, this is the fault of those black people, when in actuality, you never gave the black creator a chance to tell a story. And this is the scheme that the executives at Disney have. What they want to do with this social justice agenda is try to present black people as failures so that they can go out here and say there's a reason not to green light black films. And again, this is what they do with projects like Peter Pan and Wendy. You'll hear many of the other guys out here talking about how this film is terrible because of the identity politics. And yeah, the identity politics are terrible and take away from the story. But the ultimate goal isn't just to push the identity politics and the social justice agenda. It is to deny black creators like myself an opportunity to go out here and tell unique and original stories. It is about trying to prevent black creators from getting into the marketplace. It is about trying to go out here and prevent black creators from being able to get in the door. That's what Peter Pan and Wendy is all about. And it's about using the failure as related to identity politics to prevent Disney from having a reason to greenlight another Black Panther or another original project by another black creator like myself. Now, if you want to pick up the first book of the SJS Direct 2023 catalog, John Haynes' Godbreaker, you can find it on Amazon.com right now in paperback, or you can pre-order a copy on Kindle, and it'll be delivered to your device or tablet on March 31st. And if you want to pick up the first John Haynes comic, John Haynes at Death Store, that was a part of last year's successful Kickstarter, you can pick up your own copy on Lulu right now, and... You can find that with the link in the description box. And if you want to pick up the other books of the SJS Direct Universe, like the Isis series, the E-Steam series, the John Haynes series, and the books of the Spinsterella trilogy, and my vampire novel, Eternal Night, and my sorority story, The Thetas, and my romance novel, A Recipe for Success, you can find all those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find them at other online booksellers like Smashwords, the iBookstore, and Google Play. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Coming to paperback and e-readers, John Haynes, Godbreaker, the man who rules the world, takes on the Asgardian God of Thunder in this action-packed, all-new John Haynes series adventure. Pre-order your copy of John Haynes, Godbreaker at online booksellers today. Now available on Lulu. John Haynes at Death's Door. The man who rules the world takes on the Greek god of death in this action-packed, all-new John Haynes comic book. Get your copy of the first John Haynes comic at lulu.com today.